Caught between realities, a mathematician, a book dealer, and a mobster desperately seek a notorious book that disappears upon being read. Only the author, a rakish sci-fi writer, knows whether his popular novel is truthful or a hoax. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himbar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Lavi Tidar's Circumference of the World. The Circumference of the World is a 2023 standalone sci-fi novel, I guess you could say. It's by Lavi Tidar, and it's the third novel I've read by him, the other ones being Gorel and the pot God, which I have reviewed already on the channel, and Central Station, which review will actually be going up after this. But anyways, um, this is a story about Delia Walagdabit, if I'm saying her name right. She is from Vanuatu, and her birth is recounted at the beginning of the story. Um, there's a local pigeon, which is spelled out dialectically. It seems related to English, but not in a form most speakers would recognize, since it also has some Polynesian and French included. Uh, at least I think it does. Um, the birthing is pretty accurate to anyone who has experienced one. Um, and that, you know, didn't involve an epidural. That is, uh, when Delia is handed to her mama, we discover she is an albino. This is a sci-fi set sometime in the future, but also is contemporary. It's a little confusing. Anyways, Delia um, now lives in London, though, when we see her again. Uh, or, well, when it's contemporary, which is by the year... The, by the way, the year 2001. Uh, she finds a copy of a book that doesn't exist. Or she seems to. Maybe she does. I don't know. Let's see. Um, One Load Stars by Eugene Charles Hartley, released in 1962. Um, coincidentally, it seems the main character in that book's name is Delia. Um, Hartley is like contemporary with uh, Heinlein and Asimov and Moorcock but he's not real, obviously. So, anyways, there's a ship of Theseus idea in relation to ourselves. Um, exper expertly put into words, um, math is God idea, uh, what is called science fiction, why we are here. Of course, um, a terrible question without religion. Um, what is reality? Uh, is this a simulation? Anyways, those are all questions that kind of come up very early on in the novel. Um, we also have Levi Armstrong, who is a lover of Delia's. He is a mathematician and fanatic about it, and his goal is to do something great before he turns 30. Uh, he seems to be connected to a bad man, uh, a monster, as it were. Um, she also had a lover named Malachi back on her own home island. Uh, he's also an albino, I believe, like Delia. Uh, there seems to be some entity or collective at the end of time that cannot see Delia for some reason. She is occluded, which is part of this like dying earth but not the thing going on. There are several parts to this, though. The The structure, again, is what is confusing. This is, It makes it rather confusing as, to read. I feel like it works well enough. Uh, just kind of trying to get your head around it is a little confusing. But the second part starts with um, the bookseller actually recounting meeting Delia in, in first person. The guy is off because he can't see his people's faces, at least not normally. It's curious what she hears and... Well, what he says, um, anyways. So it's put into a role um, uh, that, I don't know, it's interesting. That's like, it's not for him, but he's like put into a role, like in a book that he shouldn't be in, maybe? Anyways, the third part is about Oscar Lenz. Um, it's really about his past, particularly his time in prison in Siberia. He seems crazy. He thinks some people are those who are simulating the original uh, Lenz in a black hole in a time again. It's a weird mix of dying earth and big idea, like implied spaces or house of suns, but it's contemporary again because it's 2001, and it's almost at least on Lynn's part like a Gnostic take on the world. Um, anyways, there are also parts from the published works by Eugene Hartley, and there's also his like biography. There's a mention to the Encyclopedia Galactica Foundation. Um, honestly, the mix of reality to fiction to the far future is super cool, and again, a part that is, I don't know, just hard to describe. But it is expertly crafted, I thought. I mean, I think some people probably wouldn't like jumping all over the place, especially at the beginning. It's a little confusing. Um, it's bordering kind of on magical realism and sci-fi, which kind of I kind of got similar um, vibes from Central Station. Uh, it's a little trippy at times, and I don't use that term lightly. Um, but it does question reality, it seems. At least that's what it seems to be doing. And it would even 
and also it kind of poses the question of what did even matter if reality was not what we thought it was. Um, but again, we look at institution versus belief, and we have some great thought-provoking ideas. Um, it's a it's a great mind screwer, and almost like uh, I don't know, it, it has some pulp influence. It seems to be paying obvious um, homage to pulp as well, which I really enjoyed. But anyways, those are my thoughts. Liam from Liam Slice. I'll catch you next time.